Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Plan B Success. We have Raiden Stansel today, all the way from Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, Raiden is the founder of Peace of Mind Wealth Management. What a name, Peace of Mind Wealth Management. Is also an author and is also a podcaster who co-hosts his show, Secure Your Retirement. So we'll hear from Raiden as to how to get peace of mind, I guess, in terms of uh, your retirement and managing your wealth. So welcome, Raiden. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on today. Absolute pleasure. So tell us about your company. So we are a uh, wealth management company that uh, works primarily with individuals that are within the last 10 years of retirement or already in retirement. So from an age perspective, that has someone some typically around 55 years of age and a little bit older after that. Um, and we really have set things up to work in and what we consider to be a very holistic approach. So instead of just managing money, we actually um, help people with what we call our peace of mind retirement process, which is a, a series of steps to help somebody kind of put everything together in one big package. So not only just managing money, helping them have an income plan, helping them have a good tax strategy, and then a good estate plan. Then there's other, other things that fall under those umbrellas, but that's the, that's the big picture. All right. And uh, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it for a little over 20 years. Wow. Okay. Now, did you actually, you're, you're a certified uh, financial planner. So is that, is that how you started your career or did you do something else before you got into this? No, I, I took a very different type of path. I, I was uh, raised in a family owned business with a family owned business that was a heating and air conditioning business. My dad was a little bit older whenever I was born. He was 52 uh, years of age and, and, uh, he had this business, uh, heating and air conditioning business, and he was the kind of guy that would just took me along with him. So at five years old, I was crawling under houses, uh, helping him uh, put in and install and fix air conditioning systems. And then eventually I uh, went to work, obviously, for him as, a, as an employee, and then I took over the business. Um, and when we got out of that and decided that we had an opportunity to sell that, I thought I want to try something completely different. I didn't want to do that. I knew I could stay in that industry if, if I wanted to, but I decided to try something different. And I looked at a few different areas. One of those was insurance um, in financial services. And then I got into that and I said, I'm going to try it. It worked out really, really well. I started immediately working with individuals that were you know, close to retirement age. And, um, and then I decided I went back to school and got my certified financial planning certification and, and have been just doing that ever since. Awesome. Now, do you do have a partner? I see a picture behind you. Yes. Can you talk about uh, your partner? Yeah. So uh, his name is Merce. Uh, he has been with me now for 10 years. Um, and so he just made partner uh, this year, actually. And so uh, the idea there is, is that we do not operate where that I have clients and he has clients. Our, our objective is that we work together as a team. And so uh, it only made sense that he become a partner and, and, um, and we work together. And now we have brought on another advisor and uh, our goal will be the eventually that, uh, you know, uh, down the road that they could become a partner if they choose to do so. Awesome. So what kind of uh, clients uh, do you get and how do they find you? Most of our clients are what we consider to be professionals. Uh, we have some small business owners, but most of them are, are professionals. Uh, so they are, you know, coming out of the tech industry or pharmaceutical industry. Uh, Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, where I am at, has a big uh, uh, what's called the Research Triangle Park. And we have a lot of uh, research and different uh, large uh, corporations here. So most of our clients are folks like this. They've made a decent amount of money. You know, they've made a good, a good income, but they were good savers. And so they are your very, what we call next door millionaire. They've saved up enough money to, to classify as being a millionaire, uh, but they just don't spend a ton. Uh, they're not big spenders that they buy a new car. They have a nice house, but they don't do it every two years or anything like that. They're, they're really just being a good saver. And, um, and our ideal client is somebody who has between one and three, one and $10 million of investable assets. And, and that just fits really, really nice for us. Um, uh, 
most people have the exact same concern, whether they have a $200,000 or $20 million is, am I going to run out of money? That's their number one concern. And so what we do is help people to understand or know what their number is, how much they can spend and not run out of money. Cause that's really what it comes down to. It's much more about how much you spend than it is about how much you've accumulated. Cause I've got some clients that literally have $500,000 and they are much better off financially than some of the folks that we have that have two and three and $4 million. So, you know, a, a quick question on, on that note. You're right. A lot of people fear running out of money and uh, some of them don't even spend as a result of that. Um, you know, all the way, you know, yesterday I was actually watching something uh, from India where it said that, uh, you know, over the last 10 years, there's roughly about $2 billion sitting in banks, uh, unclaimed money, because people just passed away after saving for a long time without really spending it or passing it on. Um, and that's, that's a true freer, right? So, but is there like some kind of a magic formula? Uh, you know, a lot of people say that uh, when you get into retirement, you got to, uh, you know, your living expenses need to come down by X or Y, and it's not the same as when you're working. Is there some magic formula that people can stick to, to say that, you know, with, with my nest egg, it'll last me through the rest of my life kind of a thing? So I don't know about it being magic. I think it's just based on math, but I will speak on one thing you said first, and then I'll answer that, that part. I will tell you that one of the problems that I see, especially if you go online and you try to do what's called a retirement calculator, and you, it's going to ask you, the first thing it's going to ask you is what do you make today? And then it's going to start to do that adjustment down off of that and say, well, you don't need to make as much in, in retirement as you do while you're working. And I really believe that's a big flaw uh, way of looking at it. And the reason why is somebody could be making, uh, I don't know, $150,000, $200,000 a year. And if you put that in and you say, oh, I make $200,000 a year, the the software then is going to say, well, you don't need $200,000, you only need 80% of that. And the reality is you probably don't need even that because most people, if you're working, are saving money. Um, They're not spending every, well, let me say good savers are not spending every dollar coming in the door. Some of the of that two hundred thousand is going to taxes. Some of it's going to the four hundred one k. And others going to their their savings. So when you break all that down, the the better question to ask is how much are you actually spending today? So if I was talking to a fifty five year old person, let's say, and I said, how much are you spending today? And they told me, I'm spending ten thousand dollars a month. I'm just making numbers round. My next question is, okay, of that 10,000, do you have a mortgage? And they say, yes, I have a mortgage. How much is your mortgage? Well, my mortgage is $2,000 a month. Okay, great. When do you think the mortgage will be paid off? My goal is to have it paid off at 65. Well, then now my real spending at this point is really only about $8,000, not 10. Now they could have been making $300,000 a year, but my question now is how much are you spending? Now I put that into my software and I say, okay, if I've got X and then I'm going to have some social security coming in, maybe I have some pension. At the end of the day, I'm probably going to need something like four or $5,000 a month coming out of my savings to live on. So that's kind of how we do the math on that. Now, the second part of your question is, is there a formula that we could look at that would say, I'm not going to run out of money? There are many articles that were written for a long time saying the 4% rule. Don't take out more than 4% of your your money saved. We believe that's a little bit aggressive. Um, It can work. Um, I would tell you, though, if you can save to the point where you're when you begin your withdrawal period, because remember, you're going to go up every year because of inflation. But if I can begin my withdrawal at about two and a half percent, I am really safe. So go to a million dollars. If I start and I can retire and all I need is $25,000 a year, that's the most optimal scenario that I could do if I can do that. Meaning I've got my social security. Most of the people to retire today have social security. And then 25,000 on top of that, if I need 50,000, well, then I need to have $2 million, you know, and that's the safest way to do it. You can get a little aggressive on that um, and go to 4%. Uh, we do not like it though when anybody goes above four percent at the beginning of retirement. Now, when you get down the road and let's say you're 75 or 80 or 85, well, now taking out six or seven percent is not a big deal because I just don't have as much time. Right, right. Now, do you see um, 
the retirement habits or saving habits uh, changing, you know, with the newer generations, millennials and after, in terms of uh, um, what they're doing. There's a lot of people that kind of believe, uh, don't believe in this whole retirement uh, uh, theory at all. Well, I think that, uh, I don't know uh, to answer your question. I think that a lot of people, I'm 49. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, as I talk to other people who are my age, uh, they want to retire. I think that potentially the little difference is, uh, and I see this even with people that are 55 and 60, there's a lot of people that are not having this idea that I want to retire at 60, 65 and not do anything else. Many of them, many of the folks that retire right now are saying, Hey, I want to do something different. I just don't want to do this stressful thing I've been doing for the last 30. I would like to go do something and try something else. And maybe I don't make no ways as much money, but I don't have to. I can work and do what I want to and make maybe $3,000 a month. And that supplements my retirement. And it gives me something to do, something to get up every day and go and accomplish. And I think that's probably more and more of what we're seeing where people go, I want to start a small business. I want to do some consulting. I want to do something to generate a little bit of money, but I don't have the stress of having it be the, all the money I made when I was raising a family, so to speak. What about uh, some of the new age um, economics, for instance, crypto, right? That's something new. That's something a lot of people don't understand. Uh, and a lot of people are actually pretty confused by it. And there's always something new. NFTs, for instance, that's the latest. Uh, how does that play into uh, retirement? Well, I would tell you today, this may change. I don't think it does play into a, re a retirement plan. I think that it's so volatile and so speculative as to what it's going to do. I just don't think that that's a viable thing to bet on right now or to even use. Uh, we, we are ourselves very conservative in our investment approach. Uh, we are tracked. We, the people that come and work with us are individuals who say this, I would like to make a decent rate of return. I just don't want to lose a bunch of money. And if I use that sentence, there's no way you can tie it to something like crypto. <laughs> I can't say that I'm going to earn a decent rate of return and I'm not going to lose a bunch because I could make a lot, but I could also lose a ton. And I think until that gets and that probably is going to take years for that to become stable enough that we could say that it's it's actually a viable thing to invest in. Uh, we don't even invest in currency like the dollar uh, because of, again, it's just the returns are not stable and not there for us to be able to know what, you know, that it's going to be there for a long sustained return. What are some of the uh, recent, uh, you know, questions or challenges that you're hearing from uh, people that are retiring around this time frame, especially with the pandemic at all? From an, well, there's probably two. There's social and then there's economic. I think socially, uh, you know, the, the people that this had found themselves retired right now with this idea and dream they wanted to travel, uh, that's been, you know, put on hold for now and they've not been able to travel. We've got a lot of clients that had things booked and had things that they wanted to go and do and they've not been able to do it. And so that's can potentially be frustrating. Uh, not to mention they haven't been able to see their family the way they want to see their family. Um, that's actually getting better, but still that's been frustrating from a social standpoint. From an economic, I would say the biggest thing we're talking about right now are the potential tax changes. I think that people are concerned about our, you know, how high are taxes going to go to fund all of the spending that's been going on to, uh, from the government's perspective. And I think that's a big issue in people's minds. And I think that right now with the proposals, a lot of the proposal is only going to affect people that are making more than 400,000. I would tell you that the census of people is, is that they are saying, we believe that's a stair step and what might start off for that will eventually go down and it'll end up taxing everybody. You know, there's also the discussion about uh, bank accounts being scrutinized, uh, you know, anything over $600. Yeah, I tell you, you know, that one to me is a, an interesting one. I, uh, you know, you know, there's been there's been lots of conversations around that, you know, in the media, um, not amongst my clients. I don't think uh, anybody who's, you know, using a credit card and, and most of us do and, and most of us have transactions that we're doing. I don't think that that's a scenario that a lot of people are concerned about unless they've got something going on in the banking account that they're trying to not, they don't want to be seen. Um, so I just don't know that that's a big major concern. Like, like most of our clients are very, 
uh, conservative people in the in the approach of how they deal with money. Uh, they it, they run a very clean operation, so I don't think they're worried about anybody looking at their account. Uh, if it, when I say scrutinize or look at the account, like look at this, see what they're spending it on to see if they can catch them, because that's really what the IRS is saying. They're saying, hey, we want to go look at these accounts to see if there's money that should be getting taxed that's not getting taxed, and that's that's a rarity. I mean, it's out there, but I don't think it's a it's a common. You know, for somebody who's actually just starting off their career at this point, what would be your career advice? What would be your retirement advice for them? To start saving, I don't care if it's $50 a month, start saving and get that habit. Um, I think a lot of people, when they start out, say, I will save when I make more. Even if they're starting a small business, they say, well, what I'm going to do is get this thing going and then I'll save. And I'm a, I'm a small business owner. I mean, I've been in business for myself my whole life. Um, and so I know what that feels like. I know what it's like whenever your, your cash flow is tight. I just think though, that when I look back that habit of saying, I'm going to save something every month, $50, 25, I don't care what the beginning number is. So you take, for example, we just hired a, a guy that's somewhat new out of college uh, in his early twenties. And there is where he needs to be saving. Cause if he can get in the habit of saving now, it just makes everything else work so much better um, going forward. And then and that's just a habit that needs to be developed. And it's not in everybody's habit. Most people are just used to spending. How about, how about uh, saving is one thing, but how about investing? So again, I think, you know, keep it simple. Uh, don't, I, I do not agree. My son is uh, 19 years old and he started investing in crypto and actually did pretty good. Uh, then he lost a big chunk of it and that scared him. I think that it was fun. It's kind of like almost like a video game to kids, young people uh, to do that. I would say, keep it simple. Uh, put your money into a vehicle that's going to get you good tax treatment for right now. That's a Roth IRA. Put it into a Roth, then put it into uh, some some basic type investments. Go out and get, you, you can buy uh, exchange traded fund or ETFs and they are very broad. You can buy you know, and basically all U.S. stocks, get you some international stocks and just get a nice mix in there. And then don't try to do anything fancy with it right now. Just get your get your habit in in that in, in the savings place and then invest it in something that's just going to grow over time and have stability. Now, you've written three books, right? Can you talk us through those? So all three books are in all essence. One, the first one was super technical, um, all about the technical stuff. We, we made the, the second and the third book much more along the storylines of people that are getting ready for and living throughout retirement. And some of the key things they need to think about, um, the, the, for example, the current book in the, in the opening chapter is all about how we manage money. We believe in an active approach. We believe there's a time to be invested. We believe there's a time to be in cash. Uh, and our objective is to protect on the downside. So we explain that philosophy. Uh, we also talk in there about income. Uh, we break income down into three categories. We break it down into essential money that we have to have every single month just to live. We've got to pay the bill, the light bill. We've got to pay the water bill. We've got to pay, got buy food. Those are my essentials. And then we've got our wants. I want a car. I want to go on a vacation. I want to do whatever I'm going to do. And then we got legacy. And the legacy is basically money that I want to give away to either charity or kids or relatives. So when we break income down that way, that helps us come up with an income plan because the essentials have to be there no matter what. Uh, then I can start figuring out what my wants are. And even when people fill out our financial snapshot, they break, we have them break their money down that way. And that just is a big eye opener uh, to a lot of people when they break their income down that way. Uh, the other part of everything is uh, in that book is taxes. Taxes is something that has to be dealt with. We believe that good tax strategy, good tax planning is essential to having a good retirement plan. So we just in that book are walking people through scenarios and stories about what they need to think about when it comes to that phase of life. And, and you could be 40 and read the book and just go, okay, I know what I'm, what I'm working toward, but uh, it's, it's all around that focus. And where can people find these books? They are all on Amazon. Uh, we have them listed on the website with a direct link. Our website's pomwealth.net. There's links there to take them right to Amazon that they can get that. But any of the major book online bookstores. Awesome. And then what about your podcast? Tell us about that. 
So we started the podcast a little over a year ago, and I think right now we're on episode 120. We do two a week. One is on Monday. We do an expert interview, uh, and we've had people on from a, just a ton of different backgrounds. We've talked to people about uh, your common things like Social Security, Medicare, taxes. But we've also talked to people about lifestyle, social issues. Uh, we had somebody came on and talked about how to play the card game bridge, how to play pickleball, um, and then other health things, what I can do to be healthy in retirement. So we that's every Monday. And then every Wednesday, we do what's called retirement in action. And we actually take a topic, a common question that we get all the time, and we break it down in that episode. Um, and I will tell you of all the things I've ever done, that is by far the most, um, I've gotten the most accolades over the podcast. And the reason why is because they say, wow, it's like I'm going to a retire and go back and listen to it again or whatever they want to do. And then the Wednesday show, we also off of that show have a blog written every week that will break it down in a written form. So no matter how a person wants it, they can read it, they can listen to it, they can go on YouTube and watch it. No matter what it is, we just want people to get educated. Awesome. And uh, in terms of the services that you provide, and for someone who's interested, what's the best way to get in touch? The best way is to go to the website, go to pomwealth.net. I I always encourage people to go to the blog page because there's a tremendous amount of articles there on these topics. But at the top right hand corner of the page of the, uh, any one of the pages is a button that says you'd like a 15 minute complimentary phone conversation. You'll be talking to myself or immerse and we will are glad to answer any questions you have, help you get any information that you want to get. And just to get that process started, it's completely laid back. No obligation. Doesn't cost anything. Awesome. Well, this has been great. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us today and walking us through retirement and wealth management. And uh, we wish you the very best for your books as well as your podcast and your business. Before I let you go, any takeaway for the listeners, anything that you'd like to share? Um, I would say uh, whether you're a small business owner or you are a person that's working for someone else, I I think that, that to get into the idea of whatever you make, and I don't care if it's $20,000 a year or $2 million a year, uh, make sure you always build in something to save every month because that's going to be the future. And if you don't do it, no matter what you're making, it, it, it won't, you won't ever do it. You'll just spend everything you got. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.